Hello and welcome to TPM's 4-Minute Friday. Today I want to take a look at working with schedules, uh, specifically working with formulas inside of schedules and how we can deal with the issues we typically have if we try to do math when working with units. Uh, oftentimes we're going to get a error message that tells us we're using inconsistent units. So how do we deal with that? Also, I want to show you how we can use the units that are already predefined in Revit to accomplish much the same result, much of the same results. So let's flip on over Revit and we'll take a look at that. So you'll see I'm inside of a uh, small little Revit project. As usual, I've got a small project to, to show concepts rather than having a rather busy project. But we're doing this with steel. So you might say, well, that's not really relevant to architects, but it is. We just happen to use steel. You can do this with column. Uh, if we're doing architects, it could be you know linear feet of walls or square footages of walls, or if we have any type of board walls as well, we could do square footages of roofs. So really these same concepts can occur in, in all the disciplines that we have. So for sake of time, I've predefined a few things here. And I'm using the steel uh, because we have beams and we columns, and also that uh, we might likely, as a matter of fact, it's very common that we'll have multiple materials. We might have uh, concrete beams and concrete framing members as well as steel, but we only want to have a steel or a schedule for steel. I'll show you how we accomplish that. So for sake of time, I've already created something down here, and that is material weights. I just want to point out that when I've created this particular schedule here, I did not use schedule and quantities. You, you could do that, but you would be limiting by uh, the categories available, saying I want a table for just beams and a table for columns, and I have to duplicate them and have two separate tables or three or four, depending on the, the categories I'm wanting. If we switch over and do a material takeoff, then we're effectively saying, regardless of what the category is, I want the material of this particular named material. And that's what I've done here. So let me go ahead and open this up and you'll see that with multiple categories using material takeoff, I can come down here and actually choose material objects. So I've taken the type and the category to help us organize this, the, date, uh, the data, the table a little bit better, and then the material and, and uh, name and volume. So having the material name allows me to filter that. So if I do have a project with multiple materials and I only want a steel uh, weight system or a schedule, then I want to say in my filter that I only want material that equals my particular steel material. If I had concrete, I have multiple weights of concrete, I'd have a different one for that. So this simply allows me to filter out any other components that are not defined as steel. And then from there, it's just a matter of categorizing these so that they're grouped together for a category so I can see their intent and use. Uh, and then Formatting is what we're going to look at in a second. So what we want to do is we're going to go to fields, and we're going to do this twice. We're going to do kind of a manual method, which is where we oftentimes get the error message. So down here is where I can uh, create a calculated parameter or a formula. And I'm going to call this a manual uh, weight. So from here, we can use a discipline. And in this case, I'm going to use common, which a lot of people do, because they say, well, it's text, it's numbers, it's length, it's area, but there's no weight on here. That's okay, it's a number. We'll go with a number. And here where you can say, I want to type in the, calc uh, the calculated value. Uh, you can type it in by hand, but you have to be very careful. You be very precise. It is case sensitive, but I can make it a little bit easier by hitting the dot, dot, dot right here. And from here I can say, well, take this volume, which is the you know volume per member. And then we're gonna multiply that by a value of 490, which is pretty much the standard weight we're gonna use for cubic feet, uh, a cubic foot of steel. Sounds like we're good to go, but when we do this, you see we get an error message, inconsistent units. And I get a lot of customers call up or when class and they want to know what's going on here. The reason for that is simply because we have a volume of cubic feet multiplied by a unitless number. So Revit can't deal with that. It says I can't take a unified or a number that has units and then multiply one that does not have units. Well, it's actually a very easy fix if we want to keep this. We'll see shortly how we might want to do this another way. But I can strip away the unit by simply dividing this by one. So if I take the value that has the unit on it, divide it by one, that strips the unit away, and I'm left with just a number being able to divide, uh, multiply by another number. So sure enough, it lets me have it. Now before I uh, finish this out and take a look at it, I do want to take that manual weight and make that a uh, total. And you'll see if we field format this, we uh, say it's a fixed number, and we'll just use the uh, whole number here. Let's take a look at it. So sure enough, there it is. You'll see we have our calculated weights taking this value and multiplying it by the um, 
volume of 490. And you say, well, why isn't 491? Well, if we actually extend this out to about four decimal places, I think it's a 003, then it multiplies out and rounds up to 491. So there we go. Now, for a lot of people, that's all they need. They might use this internally, and, and they're good to go. I've had some people that will come up here and define uh, the fact that they're using pounds up here and defines that shows that this, uh, these are pounds. That's about as far as we can go with this. There's no way with the technique I just showed you're using the general um, uh, definitions that we can add a suffix indicating these are being pounds. So there we are. That's part of this is to show you how we can strip away the units. However, I do want to show you that in this particular example, something that a lot of people are not using, that is using the built-in units of Revit to accomplish much the same. So to accomplish this, we need to go back in and add the actual unit weight. I'm going to move this down just to keep it easier to work with. So what I can do is say take the unit weight and multiply it by volume. So these are built in. So if I go to the calculated parameter, and this time I'm going to say Revit unit weight, just so it's named differently, we can see that it's there. But rather than using common, I'm going to use a discipline. Now, a lot of people will overlook this because they think common's what they want to use. If I'm architectural, I'm not structural, so I'm not going to use them. Uh, I'm not HVAC. If I'm structural, I'm not using the others. But really, these simply define the type of units you want to have available. So if I go to HVAC, I have density, I have power, air flows, you know, factors, duct insulation, cooling load, and so on and so forth. And if I go to, you know, piping, then I have, again, density, friction, pressure, temperature, pipe size. So if I go to structural, now I do have force and linear force, but notice I have weight. So this is predefined to accept weight as a value. So again, I could type this in, or I'm simply going to take the volume and multiply it by the unit weight. When I pick OK, you'll see I do not get an error message because it understands that these are weights, so it, it keeps the same units in place. And again, before I get out of here, I'm going to go ahead and say take that and give me a total. And then as far as field formatting for this is where it makes it a little bit easier, or at least looks a little bit more professional. Because under that unit weight that I've just defined this way, I can tell it to notice what type of unit this is going to be. Because we told it's a structural discipline and a weight, now we can choose newtons, uh, kips, uh, kilos, pounds, so on and so forth. And let's just go ahead and round it off to whole number. And we want to use LB for our pounds. So there we go. We pick OK and then OK. Now we have the same values, but we have that suffix of pounds inside of here, which is a little bit more professional. It's what a lot of people are wanting out there. So reality is we might not want to use this, but I did want to show you how you can strip away that unit if needed. And then for the most part, these were simply being used so that I could verify what I wanted to use. So I might end up with something like this that allows me to see the definition of pounds in that field and then totaling them up based off the cubic fee, uh, volume uh, for each member and then totaling it up. So there you go. Hopefully that'll help you out. It's a couple of tips there about how to work with the uh, stripping away the units of a defined value. And if need be, try to look at the discipline so you can see if there's other units that would accomplish the same thing and give you a little bit more finished uh, results that you're looking for by being able to put a suffix or possibly even a prefix out there. So there we go. Appreciate your time and hopefully that'll help you out.